Welcome back. Paralympian and convicted murderer Oscar Pistorius is now eligible for parole in March 2023. The Supreme Court of Appeal has amended its decision to increase his sentence after it admitted to an error. It's emerged that the judgment failed to take into account the more than 500 days he had served already. Pistorius killed his girlfriend Riva Steenkamp, uh, Steenkamp on Valentine's Day in 2013. He was initially found guilty of culpable homicide, but when it went to the Supreme Court in 2015, that was changed to murder. To discuss, we're joined by senior legal uh, reporter Karen Morn. Karen, great to have you with us as always. How does this change things uh, for Pistorius, firstly? Well, essentially what happened was that his lawyer, Julian Knight, actually wrote to the Supreme Court of Appeal because correctional services had taken the stance that his appeal, his sentence was effective from um, November 2017, which is when the Supreme Court of Appeal overturned the six-year sentence that he'd been given by Judge Tokozile Masipa for murder. Um, and he basically said to the court that, you know, Pistorius had been serving that murder sentence from July 20, uh, 7, 2016, and that in effect, um, the court, the, the position of DCS was effectively discounting a period of over a year that he'd already served. So with this clarification, we've spoken to the Department of Correctional Services under the Correctional um, Services Act. Pistorius is now uh, eligible for parole once he's completed half of that sentence, which is around um, six years, eight months, and that then if becomes effective in March 2023. Um, it's important to remember that being eligible for, for parole and being granted for, for parole, uh, granted parole are two different things. There's obviously a parole board process that goes under that uh, you know gets underway. But the most important thing to remember is that you know if correctional services position was maintained, Pistorius would have only been eligible for um, for parole in probably around late 2024. So it is quite a significant difference for him. So, so he's been sitting in jail thinking, I can only even think of getting out in, in 2024. Um, now that changes to 2023. How, how did this happen? So is it a correctional uh, services mistake looking at the, the eligibility for parole or, as it's being reported, a mistake actually by the Supreme Court of Appeals? Well, essentially, the Supreme Court of Appeals have issued an order on the 21st of January, basically stating that they had made it clear in, his, in their judgment that, you know, that this judge, the sentence should have come into effect on, on the 6th of July um, 2016, which is when Pistorius started serving his sentence for murder. However, they did not put that in the court order. Um, and as a consequence, uh, direct, uh, correctional services had taken the position that this was a completely new sentence. And so that that 506 um, days that had already been served effectively didn't exist. What's interesting, um, you know, and the court now taking quite an extraordinary step to clarify because it had, you know, his lawyers pointed out that this does have quite profound implications for his parole. This point was also raised by Pistorius's lawyers when they attempted to challenge his sentence in the constitutional court, but the court ultimately not even agreeing to hear that appeal. Um, the SCA now effectively correcting um, its ruling in, in, a, in a decision that will have significance for both Pistorius and for the family of Riva Stianka. I have spoken to their lawyer. They issued a statement um, late this, this afternoon basically saying no one had even made them aware of this. And the timing was profoundly unfortunate because while they understood that mistakes could be made, you know, we are approaching, I think, the seventh or eighth year anniversary of Riva Stiankamp's death. Um, on the 14th of, of February. And so, you know, this kind of news that's being put back into the public spotlight because of this order by the appeal court is obviously quite painful for them. Yeah. And, and any apologies for, the, for this um, from, from the court for not clarifying this earlier? I, I, I'm finding it quite interesting. Right? His legal team, you, you said, wrote a letter, uh, his, his attorney, but why weren't they jumping up and down uh, right, right at the start when he was sentenced? Well, you know, I mean, they did try and raise this in the constitutional court. And I think the reality is that I don't think Oscar Pistorius has had a lawyer for quite some time. 
Um, and it was what's interesting to me, Francis, is that letter about this whole issue was written in May 2020. Now, you know, several months later, probably as a consequence, arguably, of, of COVID and all the implications to the functioning of the courts, we now see this quite extraordinary um, order coming out from the court, essentially saying, we're clarifying this. We should, it should have been clear from our judgment. However, it wasn't in our order, and we're now um, making it clear. Um, so it does have profound implications for everyone involved. But if it had stood, effectively, um, 506 days over a year of his sentence that he would have already served would have been essentially absent if if there hadn't been some form of legal clarification sought from from his attorneys all right so the overall sentence uh, 13 and a half years but then you have these rules around parole which means effectively you can be released a little bit earlier uh, you, you started uh, explaining that to us karen just just tell us a bit more and i think this is so pertinent uh, because earlier in the week we were talking about eugene to blanche sentenced to 200 years or so um but on parole apparently be even being bankrolled by by the government uh, so a lot of questions about how the system actually works well, Eugene de Kock, because he was sentenced um, to life, would have been eligible for parole around after about 25 years or, or around that region. But under the Correctional Services Act, you know, life does not necessarily mean life. And a sentence of 15 years, depending on the section of the Correctional Services Act that you are sentenced under, people can be released, um, you know, after serving like an eighth of their sentence. In the case of Oscar Pistorius, the section under which he was sentenced means that he becomes eligible for parole at half of his sentence. The parole board then needs to consider whether he as an offender has demonstrated remorse, um, whether there has been rehabilitation, the attitude of Reva Steenkamp's family or the, the family of the deceased in, in other cases, the victim's family, what their perception are is, and then they make a decision in regard to that. Um, you know what's interesting with uh, with you know people like uh, Cl Clive Darby Lewis and Janusz Balish, um, etc. They have been you know detained for for quite prolonged periods of time because of dissatisfaction um, by the, the the Correctional Services Department about the, them being released on parole. And um, the Cox situation is certainly extraordinary because for the first time in South African history he was released into the custody of the State Security Agency and part of his parole conditions meant that he would have to work for them. So it is an, an, an aspect of the law which is often quite opaque and often quite, um, you know, seems to be a very much at the whims of the authorities at the time and who happens to be on the parole board and ultimately the minister. We have seen instances where the parole board has very much recommended that offenders be released and the minister um, has, has not gone along with that. Um, so ultimately, you know, with these kind of high profile cases, while a lot of offenders do get released after serving half their sentence or a fraction of their sentence, sometimes for very, very profoundly violent crimes, those kind of issues tend to slip under the radar. But obviously, because of the profile of the Pistorius matter, any attempt by him to get parole when that happens in March 2023, I think will be watched all over the world. Indeed. Uh, thank you, Karen, for, for correcting my mistake. It's not Eugene to Blanche, it's Eugene de Kock. Um, so, so has there been any um, response from Oscar Pistorius, uh, his legal team, his, his family, uh, finally, could we expect that? Well, we know that the family at the time that he was sentenced to the 15 years, his brother said that he was absolutely gutted and the family was devastated by that because originally he'd obviously got that six years behind bars after the first culpable homicide um, you know, sentence was then uh, overturned when he was convicted of murder. Um, they haven't said anything and the, the lawyer, has com uh, Julian Knight, has confirmed that in fact these letters were sent. Um, and that this will have an impact on, on his client's um, parole attempts, uh, but not really any kind of further comment. Reva Steenkamp's parents, their lawyer, Tanya Kun, releasing a statement this afternoon, basically just saying that they understood that mistakes could be made in the circumstance, but really questioning um, the timing of this and why it had to come out now. Um, and just saying it was it was a profoundly difficult time for them because obviously it is now coming up to eight years um, since she was she was shot and killed in the bathroom of Oscar Pistorius's home. So certainly on a matter like this, an unfortunate thing that such a high profile case had to be 
reignited in this way by what seems to be a very basic error by the appeal court in terms of the implications of their judgment and and also obviously a particular stance that was taken by prison authorities. Yeah, so the anniversary basically just a, a week away. Thank you very much. That was News24 legal journalist Karen Morn.